Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yi. And I'm Tom Vassell. And today we are reviewing Founders of Teotihuacan. This was one of my most anticipated games of the year. Yours as well, right? I really like polyomino stuff. Like, let me play with Tetris pieces and I usually like it. It wasn't on mine because I wasn't going to say the name of this game again. I feel like at this point they're trolling me. Yeah, it's, I get it's, it. it's become a meme of sorts. I would call it just Founders. But there's, a, there's more than one founders of game out there. Founders of base game that's quite different from the base game. That being said, the, the game that this is... It's not based on a game at all, okay? But the Take Two of the original game is my favorite of all these games. Of really? the T games. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, easily. I mean, there could be an argument made for Zulkin, but then you could also argue that Zulkin's not even really in the line since it's a different yeah, company. Yeah, okay, that's fair. But of all the other ones, I like several of them, but this that was my favorite. Um, this is not like that game at all, like, but that doesn't mean bad or good necessarily. It just was a very different experience. Loosely thematic. So let me go ahead and show you how it's played, and we'll be back. Founders Teotihuacan is a tile lane game where you're trying to lay out these tiles and score them based on where you have the temple tiles on your little temple in the middle. But also you can finish uh, some of these worship objectives and gain points and you can gain points from masks by covering up these little spaces here. The game takes place across four rounds. Every single turn on the round you're going to use one of your discs and you're going to take an action here on this action board. Let's take a closer look at this action board. So we have building actions on the top and then we have these little scroll actions on the bottom. And so whenever you place a disc in a certain column, you then choose, am I going to take the top action or the bottom action? And you take it according to the power of the discs, how many discs are there. Um, it always starts with one and then your traditional disc adds more. There are bonuses as well on the bottom um, if you're the first person to play on a disc. But basically you will choose to build a tile from up here based on its however many cube spaces it takes up based on the level. So I can build a level three. Um, or you can choose to add resources to buildings that you already have or gain two single buildings. Over here we have the temple tiles. Uh, you pay the resource costs and any additional costs that you may have um, based on level so that you can complete uh, this one and build it. You also, whenever you build something, you gain a worship tile of that level, and that worship tile can later be traded in at this action down here. This action, if you have whatever those um, requirements are on a worship tile, you can flip it over and score those points immediately. That's nine points right there. And the final, this final action over here, you can actually trade in worship tiles for points. Um, and as you do so, you'll scoot this over and each worship tile in the future that you turn in will be worth more. Um, and then you can also build pyramid tiles. These have resource costs and they are a multiplier for how many um, of those colored temple tiles are in that quadrant. Let's talk about building real quick, how you do it, why you do it, and all of that sort. Uh, your meeple is going to move around at the end of each one of your turns, and that basically says that you can only build in that half of the board. So in the temple area, I can build in these six spaces, and then in these quadrants, I can build only over here. Next turn, it will only be the top half of the board, and so forth. As you build tiles, these regular just uh, temple tiles can go anywhere in that space. They can even overlap in the middle. That's fine. Um, but they're just covering up spaces and trying to cover up maybe maps or masks or something like that. Now the resource tiles are different. The resource tiles, as you can see here, that is the brown, gray, and the yellow. They actually produce cubes around every single edge um, that's adjacent, not diagonally. And that is how you gain your resources so that you can then buy these bigger and better buildings and such. Um, you can also spend them to cover up more mask spaces. They don't produce as many resources, uh, but they do fill in spaces. Eventually, when you fill in all of the mask spaces, you can then get the highest point mask. And they do reduce in points as kind of a first come, first serve basis. Once players have spent all of their worker discs or action discs, they're going to discard one. Then they move this round tracker down. After four rounds, you've reduced by three discs. Um, and then you go ahead and head into end game scoring. 
End game scoring is all about the multipliers. You're going to multiply the color of temple tiles versus the pyramid tiles based on their level. So each one of these bottom pyramid tiles are a two times multiplier. So each one of these is worth four, two times two. Um, but then this one up here is a three times multiplier because it's on the second level. And that is going to go ahead and score as well. So we have four, four, and then six right here. And so basically we have 14 points just in these pink tiles. Your end game score is also affected by the masks and the points written on the bottom there, as well as the tiles that you've already scored and the points you've already gained on your board from these worship tiles that you flipped over. Any that are faced up will not score. Those will just be gone. And that's how you play Founders of Teotihuacan. So let's go ahead and talk about components. How do y'all feel about the way it looked, felt, saw, did? Come on now. I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like this company is just going out of their way now to make some... They have some games that look really nice. But if, since this game, a big part of it is putting the resources on the board, mm -hmm. then let's not use, not use little cubes. cubes. I mean, they don't have to be the upgraded resources that I like, right? But they could have been like gold-shaped bricks and stone and... I don't know. As long I as guess. they don't roll around, like it has to be something. Oh well, uh, yeah, sure. Flat in the original Teotihuacan, they had the little sticks of wood. They wouldn't fit in the grid spaces here. Okay. But it it is noticeable when you know. Also, Teotihuacan is one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely my favorite from this company. But yeah, you, you have the cubes, and you think, okay, that's this is a step down. Um, the art kind of evokes the original Teotihuacan, but I feel like the original one has a lot of table presence, and this one is. Well, it doesn't okay. hurt that it has those wooden tiles that build the ziggurat in the middle. Oh, sure. The pyramid is much this one cooler in the other tiles. version. Yeah, it has a, a whole green tile, a whole blue tile. Do you know, is price point different on this? Definitely. Because of that? Well, it's going to be different on this for other reasons, but we'll get to those in a bit. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. No, I... I honestly, I feel like the Teotihuacan theme is just pasted on. Like, I don't feel it in the game at all. I'd argue that it's okay. But that's been that way always. I don't think they ran in circles around the Sure, the thing but I guess it. when I think about the original game versus this game, the only thing you're doing similar is that there's a pyramid ish shape in the middle, but you don't even really build up that pyramid most games. I guess that actually leads us into something I want to talk about. Okay. Is there's no thematic reason to put the resources around. The stuff that you have on the board to put the resources on the board at all. When I first read that rule, I was very impressed with it. I thought, that's really cool. Mm. But in practice, it was a lot less cool than I thought it would be. This feels like really? an, a, a clever mechanism that they thought, I'm like, wow, it's neat. And even when you, you tell me, like, you can put the resources, I'm like, wow. So that blocks you from putting stuff out, you know, what? But it, in practice, it's not very interesting, it's just there. That's funny because I felt like I was really calculating moments where I said, I want to fit this big piece over here for scoring and I'm going to have this little like single spot in the middle. So I'm going to put that single spot down, get those four resources, spend those so that I can later place this piece. Like I, I don't know, I planned that out and I thought it was cool. I, I kind of lean with Tom on this one. I thought, oh, this sounds really cool, but then in practice, okay, this is, it's just a count of how many pieces I have and then I... I build stuff, you know, it has that architect rule, you can only build on the half of the board where your architect is. All of these things sound neat, and in practice were just kind of okay. They were just mechanisms that were there, uh, rather than feeling like they added a ton to the game. And it, it is a polyomino game that almost doesn't quite feel like a polyomino game because there's a lot of building things, but it's also a building game that doesn't quite feel like I'm building up a lot either. Interesting, because I enjoyed the polyomino aspect of it. I think that's what I enjoyed the most, was laying stuff out, fitting it in the quadrant so that it would score, and seeing how can I maximize, how can I get as many blues fit in here as I possibly can, but still get resources. So I had like my resource side of the board, and then my scoring parts of the board. And I don't know, I found that part interesting. The part that I didn't find interesting was the arc of the game. So throughout the game, you're losing actions, every single eclipse or round or whatever you want to call it. And I felt like as stuff got tighter, I could do less. Yeah, you... And that frustrated me. Like, I think that that's, the, that's what really lowered my score for it, is I felt like the polyomino stuff was cool, but as, as I was taking action, suddenly each action space is worth less. 
because there's less stuff going on those spaces because we have fewer actions. And so I can't get a heavy resource item. And then if I am able to get it, my board's really tight, so I can't put it there and get a lot of resources. I'm still just getting a few. And so I, I just felt like that flow and that arc of the game just kind of petered instead of increasing into like a dramatic ending. Sure. Yeah, you lose a disc every round, and so there's just fewer. Uh, I also thought that the mechanism of the kind of worker placement of it, you put the disc out, sounds really cool. The more discs you stack up, the stronger the action. But it also was another mechanism in the game that sounds cooler, I think, than it actually was in practice. I think in practice it was okay. Uh, so, I don't know. That's the, that's the hard thing. is not a ton impressed me actually playing through this game. And I think that you nailed it, that the arc, for me, doesn't have this nice build-up. It's, kind of, it's kind of flat, almost diminishing because of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I liked, the, I liked the action space. I appreciate that the first time that you put out a disc, you can get a reward. And so that gives you a little bit more bonuses. I think the only thing that frustrated me is that for the resource buildings, you couldn't get a larger resource building without those stacking up, and there's no way to mitigate that. All the other things, you could pay extra gold, or you could pay extra wood, or you could pay something to make your action powerful enough. You just had to spend more. But you didn't have that when you were gaining the resource stuff. Hmm. So, well, yeah. for me, in totality, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. And hmm. I don't even... Any, I, 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 you might argue me up to a 6, right? Because I don't know that the game... I don't know that there's much of it that I actively disliked. But I just kept being unimpressed with it. Because you kept saying, and, and that's how I felt about this game, is I constantly was like, when I went over the rules, you know, sometimes you know you read through rules and you're like, this game's going to be amazing. This game's going to be terrible. I read through these rules and I was like, this is going to be a pretty good game. Yeah. Because it all sounds cool. The disc thing sounded cool. Mm -hmm. the, the, if you have this on the second level, you get twice the points. But since you can only build where your dumb architect is all the time, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I, I wasn't able to pull off cool combos. Once again, if you had more actions, if you didn't keep losing actions every round, you might yeah. be able to do more. And since I wasn't able to do a lot, and the resources, putting them around, again, I said, it sounded cooler, but also it's fiddly. Slows the game down a little bit more than it needs to as someone puts them all out. It, and it does, I don't know, it just feels like, and then the name is going to hurt it because I'll be like, whoa! And this game is not that way. This game feels like a filler almost, but it's thinkier than a filler would be. And a little longer. And longer. Yeah, so just, I don't want to play it anymore. It sounds bad, so I'm giving it a five. All right, what's your score? I'm also giving it a five. Oh, I thought you'd be higher really? than me. No, a lot of the same thoughts. This, Like I said, this was one of my most anticipated games. I like this line. I have a lot of trust in this company. And then this one just kind of didn't live up to the, the name, even. Uh, I didn't really feel like I was building anything too exciting, like you said, and, and I felt like the, the arc of the game really hurts it. It diminishes, but it kind of slows down, and you don't leave the game feeling stronger, like too much stronger than when you started it, uh, and it's it's only okay. I even tried the solo mode in it to see if I would enjoy that, and it's it's everything about it is okay at most. I don't really want to play it again, and so... Uh, hmm okay at best and other parts are quite boring so five five out of ten for me okay well i'm giving it a seven i really enjoy the the tactile puzzle that's going on i enjoy that idea of do i want to build up a quadrant full of scoring or do i want to build it full of resources how do i want to lay out my little pyramid scoring thing i enjoy all of that but i just didn't like how it ended like it just that arc was a struggle so it it could have been a 7.5 for me but i just feel like what happened at the end? Like, it was very disappointing. So I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. There's tons of stuff in there that I thought was fun, and I really enjoy polyominoes. So I give it a seven. Now, sometimes when you justify your score, you make it sound worse than you actually feel about it. Am I making it sound better than I feel about <laughs> no, it? No, no, no. You're Am I a, accurate yeah, this time? Okay. No, you're saying you like the game. Yeah, I like the like game. It. Like, I'd play it again. I think it's fun. I just I feel like they could have done more, and it could have been a little bit better than what it was. And I think that's a differentiator. Tom and I, I don't think we've played you this game again. You guys didn't have fun. I just yeah. I won't, just to be clear. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And I'm Tom Bassel. And have fun with your polyominoes. <laughs>